Hi, this is question number five in our ACT practice exam. I'm going through the ACT math test question by question, video by video, and this is a typical fifth question you would see on an ACT math section that you might take in the future. Looks like some algebra, and there is a degree two term in this equation that uh, we're looking at here, x squared, of course, so we're dealing with some exponents. All right, let's read the question. Which of the following numbers is a solution to x squared minus 12 equals 4x? Well, I'll write out the equation quickly. x squared minus 12 equals 4x. Oh, why am I putting minus 4x? Let me get rid of that. All right, equals 4x. All right, well, there are a couple options here that I might think about right at the beginning. Well, what if I get rid of the x squared by taking the square root of x squared and my entire side here, and therefore I have to do that to both sides, and that would get rid of x squared because the square root of x squared is x, but then I have negative, or I'm sorry, the square root of 12 to deal with and the other side gets messy as well. So let me rethink that strategy. That's going to be a little bit too messy for what I really want to do on this problem and probably too time consuming. So what about the idea of making this quadratic? So if I subtract 4x from both sides, I could get an equation that looks like this. And that would be possibly useful because this would be set to zero and if you know how to use the quadratic formula you might be able to find both solutions and figure out which one is over here. But that's not really a great uh, way to approach it either because this is question 5 not question 35 or 45 on the exam so there are easier ways to solve this. So let me show you one. Again always good to look at the range of the answers. It looks like a bunch of integers and it's just negative 4 through 13 so our answer has to fit in there and remember that this is the ACT so you can just plug in answers. Somewhere in here A through E the an is the answer. So you can just plug it in for X and you can find it. So what should we plug in? Well you can plug them all in and solve for all of them and see which one works and just start with A and go down to E but it might be helpful to eliminate some of the usual suspects, like the number 1. Well, if we plug in 1 for x, I think you should be able to see just by solving it in your head that it's not going to work out, because 1 squared uh, minus 12 is supposed to equal, to, uh, equal 4 times 1, and that's just not going to work out, right? Because 1 squared is 1, and minus 12 is supposed to equal just 4, and 1 minus 12 is actually negative 11, and that doesn't equal 4. So that's not going to work out. And I'm hoping that you could see that in your head and kind of detect that that answer wasn't going to work out. So let me get rid of that idea. So 1 can be eliminated. Let's just take out 1. Oops. Let's take out 1 or b. And then I always like to look to the biggest number and see if that's any help. Well, maybe you know that 13 squared is a big number. So let me let's just look at this. 13 squared minus 12 is supposed to equal 4 times 13. Well, 13 squared means 13 times 13. So 13 times 13 minus the number 12 can't be equal to 4 times 13. Doesn't it seem like this side would be too big? And I'll give you a, an even closer look here. This would not, would not work out very well, right? Because this is 157 is supposed to equal then 52. So that's, that's not going to work very well. So let's, let's get rid of that. Uh, and so these big numbers and small numbers aren't going to work and sometimes you know the first one you look at is going to work but in this case uh, it's not so we can eliminate e all right well, what about a negative number that's that's kind of a you know an obvious one to take a look at right might be might be the answer maybe they're trying to trick you and give you the you know the answer happens to be the one negative number in the whole group well 
you may notice that if you do that, you end up with negative 4 squared. Let's just take a look at this basic or the, the problem before we, we do all the calculations. Uh, 4 times negative 4, right? Okay. Well, we know that neg negative 4 squared is 16, so let's just do that part first. But think about it. 16 minus 12 is going to be a positive number, but 4 times negative 4 is going to be a negative number. It's actually going to work out to 4 is supposed to equal negative 16, and of course that's not right either. So, you know, if you could do that in your head and kind of figure out that this side, would, you know, the left side of the equation would have been positive and the right side of the equation would have been negative, then that was, that was great and that would have saved you some time. So we're really down to the two realistic answers, which are 3 and 6, C and D. Well, if, uh, you know, if we take a look here and, you know, go through, I'll just get rid of some of that stuff and let's draw a line here. So it's between 3 and 6. Now I can just simply go through and just plug them both in. Uh, so why don't I do that? Well, I know that 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 12 is supposed to equal 4 times 3. Well, I know just by looking at it that 4 times 3 is 12. 9 minus 12 isn't going to equal that. So really, I know that D is the answer just simply through elimination. So remember on the ACT, Eliminating all the wrong answers is just as good as picking the right one, and sometimes that's what you need to do. Just to make sure we've got the right answer, uh, if we plugged in 6 for x, it would be 6 squared minus 12 is supposed to equal 4 times 6. And that all works out to, this is, you know, 36 minus 12 is supposed to equal 24, and I think you can see that it does. 24 equals 24. And so D is the answer for number 5 of our ACT math practice test.